Hey everybody, we're going to do some gear milling and you got to get it arbor ready. Moore has some tricky tooling. Let's make it work. Here's an arbor that I thought I'd use for one of our gear milling arbors. Uh, this is a Moore Arbor, and it's meant to be flexible, and I thought, well, let's just see how good Mr. Moore is. And so I put our Alina Tenth Indicator on it, and yeah, it's Tenth. And boy, that needle's not moving. So the machine's good, and the tooling's good. But let's get back to putting our more on our table. There's our nice uh, new fixture plate to hold the more. Excuse me, to hold the Ellis dividing head. We're just putting that together right here, getting it all lined up. And the setup involves for this rotating head, making sure that it's lined up on zero in terms of uh, this axis, and tightening everything. There's a lot of different size bolts on this, I believe. Uh, that's uh, like 11 sixteenths or something like that. So what we're going to do here is, you know, setting that angle is relatively easy on the dial. But what we need to do is you know, bring the chuck down so that it's horizontal. It's got a dial also. And when we look at this dial, you know, you can read it to probably, I don't know, 15 seconds. Those are degree marks there. So we're just setting this up by hand. Sorry for the wiggly camera action, but we're pretty dialed in. And everything's operating just perfectly. Nice, smooth, Ellis dividing head. Everything has that really solid feeling at this point. The rigidity of the system is, is really, really good. So what I think we'll do is stick a precision bar here. Now, I would never machine anything this long in here. But what we're going to do is, is use it to tram the angle in on the Ellis dividing head make sure we're everything's straight now it looks straight as an arrow but let's just double check it so here is a fair amount of back and forth with the indicators checking to see what uh, that this is set up properly and this is pretty standard procedure just get your indicator uh, we have a magnetic Noga base set up on the machine and the table can move independently from it. So I'm just going to move the table in the X direction to set this. A little tricky with the bar. You'll be able to tell whether you're falling off or not. If the angle's wrong, boy, that's going to be wrong. And if the uh, height is not right, that'll, that'll make a difference too. So you know when you've got it when you're moving things around and that needle's not moving at all. Now let's really give it a good couple of inches of tram here at the end. It's the same angle wherever you are on it. So if you if you tram three or four inches and it doesn't move much, you're pretty dead nuts on. So I think that's uh, I think that's pretty solid. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're using Bridgeport or Kearney Trekker or whatever kind of mill you have. You're going to need to do the same procedure to set up your dividing head so that it's, uh, you know, at correct zero angle, 90 degree angle, whatever you want to call it, to the milling cutter. And the more is pretty specific with a 31 30 second wrench, but the room for that flat in there is not very big, so this... This nice old alloy super inch got a hair trim right there. 31 30 second. That's the flavor of more. All right. And here we are just 
you know, kind of at the end of the day, getting this thing moved into position, kind of showing you how it looks and how it's going to work. And that, that arbor is a little bit long, but that's what we made. And uh, let's see how this is all going to go together. But before we go any further, let's uh, let's tram this thing. Now, this is, again, that same arbor we started with that was right on the money. So it's a tenth or two right here, different gauge. So it's really close up there in the spindle. And unfortunately, I think you can see it if you're in, you know, this thing is not very round. I don't think it's... Uh, You know, you can see the clearance there between the arbor and the the new arbor I made and the more arbor. And that's part of the problem. I backed it off when I was uh, trying to make that, make that fit. And so it's a problem. And I'm not sure I didn't catch it. So, man, it's terrible. But it shouldn't be that bad, even if it isn't all the way shouldered up. But it is absolutely terrible. That that ends up, it's pretty quick, but it's like 8,000s, 10,000s. So let's set it at the bottom of the arbor and see what we look like. And it's way out of whack, too. So dang, that was a lot of time on that arbor. Getting it all threaded and everything, but, you know, we... we didn't observe a few laws of concentricity. One, the arbor was threaded onto a shank, so you know many of the mating surfaces had to be perfect. And here we are at the end of the day, just kind of taking it apart and all assessing everything. So let's go get another head start on the next arbor. Cut another one. Let's make it shorter. We'll use the same keyway, but this time let's get our grind going so here we go dusting off arbor number two and what we're doing here is just uh, making this wheel flat the grinding wheel and this uh, the thing in the foreground is called a diamond dresser so it has a little industrial diamond nib in the tip of it and it is we're just traversing it across the wheel to get it nice uh, get the wheel nice and flat and I'm making about three tenths, two tenths, kind of going from probably four tenths to about a tenth uh, passes along this wheel to get it to dress nice and fine so that it will cut the wheel consistently across the whole width of that grinding wheel. Now this is pretty standard practice. You do see the arbor to the left in the collet and a dead center with a spring-loaded handle on your right that is going to hold the end of the stick out of that tool in its center. 60 degree included angle center and it's all set up to go once we dress the wheel. So this is pretty standard stuff, first step. And things are going good. Now I don't have, I do have coolant on the machine but I've left it off for this first part to so we can see real well down in the machine. And everything ready here, taking off the diamond dresser and doing a little cleanup on the table and then we'll we'll move the we'll move the wheel back away. Just checking it out there. Feel you'll know when you've done this a bunch, you'll be able to feel it and you'll know you've got a good dressing. Nice square wheel. Now we've moved the workpiece in, and we're not touching the workpiece yet, so I'm starting it up. Not uh, not touching that arbor yet. So that uh, tailstock is spring-loaded, and once you get it all set in there, it allows for a teeny bit of expansion of the <coughs> workpiece, whatever you're working on, especially if it's long, we'll do that. And now we're getting nice, consistent workpiece and grinding wheel are touching each other that full distance of the shaft there. Now we're starting off, we have quite, quite a ways to go here, uh, 10, 15 thousandths, a, lot, a little too much stock to leave was left here. 
So we're just uh, kind of enjoying ourselves doing a little grinding. Sugami is definitely a new to us tool and new to us process in terms of doing it ourselves. We've used a lot of local grinding job shops. So this is just, you'll see those sparks coming off that whole wheel, the whole length of the grinding wheel. And you'll see them coming off in bursts. It's because there's a keyway in the arbor to hold the uh, gear milling cutter, the gear cutter. So we're just traversing back and forth. Real simple stuff. So let's get in here a little closer and get a look at this. Now we're just traversing the part back and forth across the wheel by hand here. And we're getting ready to come in and, and make a measurement. Now this machine has numbers on the dials and everything. It does not have a digital readout or anything like that. So it's uh, just good practice to come in here and measure and mark and check everything. So we're, we're coming into uh, our measurement here and this tells us about how much we have left to do. Now you can see in this in this sequence here, we're taking quite a bit off. I think we dialed in seven or eight tenths. And you can see as we come across, there's a little bit of staining on the piece from touching it and measuring it. And this just cleans all that right off. Nice big spark show. But you can see that cut line coming right across the uh, workpiece here. Now this is going to go in a different, more arbor, no threaded connection this time. This one's going to slip into a, I think they call them a collet, It's uh, but it's just a, a hole with a, a slip fit, snug fit, as snug as we can make it. And we're just getting this cleaned up really nice and on target so it'll, it'll go into our more collet. No threaded connection here and minimize the concentricity errors of uh, other methods. So <clears throat> now this one's not perfect by any means, but what we have here is we'll have a much better, much better concentric piece. Not only the place where the arbor, gear cutting arbor goes has been ground on the same set of centers, but uh, this part that goes into the more arbor is ground. So we could grind between the centers on both ends and uh, that'd be a way to improve this further. And we could also um, grind <clears throat> all these surfaces and then do the threading last. The threading is very inconsequential from a, a, a run out standpoint as we're just using it to put pressure on the piece. It's not necessarily a concentric thing, although the nut's important. Everything gets to be important when you're trying to do things for higher tolerances. And that's why it all costs more. You need equipment like this. So once you get uh, to the end here, let's give it another measurement. I think we've basically through the run. Now I... This one may be a little warm here, but let's just uh, check it and move our work along. And there we go. Now let's take it over to the bench and insert it in the more arbor and let's see how well it fits. Bam. Perfect. It sounded good. Yeah, it's a match. That is definitely a nice precision fit. So that's awesome. The harbor's ready to go. Let's take it back over to let's take it back to our <clears throat> tester here. So we'll test it again between centers, but all mocked up the tool, the arbor, all of it, and let's see how good we are now. Make sure everything's super clean. Now there's a rail on the front over there that I'm working with that holds that indicator to the base. 
and what we're going to see here when we check it now this is a tenths indicator which is pretty you know very finicky i'm not turning it much but uh it uh it is certainly sensitive So let's preload it. And get it close to zero. We're just kind of seeing some relative differences here when you're looking at the run out. And it looks like we're at a, looks like we're at about a thousandth or so. So that's pretty good. I think we'll take it. And I think we'll use that on the machine just fine. Perfect. We're ready to go mill a gear.